Um, hello, um, I'm Tara Connolly. Hiya, as Lara introduced me. I'm very sorry if at any point I'm incoherent. I did fly here at about a quarter past five this morning, so bear with me. Um, you can hear from the accent clearly that I'm from Northern Ireland, so I have a lot of thoughts on this topic, so I will try and put them into some sort of brief stream of thought. Um, the issue of the Irish border and freedom of movement is absolutely crucial in the wake of Brexit. Um, just to give very brief context, I'm not going to patronise anybody in the room about the history of the Troubles and why the border is as it is at the moment in Ireland, but the Good Friday Agreement in 1998 saw the end of conflict in Northern Ireland and created an open and permeable border that allowed people to freely move between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Um, this has secured peace and prosperity in Northern Ireland as well as a working relationship with the Republic that has allowed for infrastructure to be built such as shared roads, uh, shared policing, shared electricity boards, basically an entire infrastructure across the island of Ireland that is protected and secured by the freedom of movement. Um, so it's crucial after so many years of conflict. Um, it's also allowed me to have both an Irish passport and a British passport, which I know is... <laughs> um, so there are loads and loads of issues as to why Brexit threatens uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland more specifically that I will touch on as many as I can because there is just a whole ream of them. Um, so firstly, on a personal level, I am an Irish citizen. I wholeheartedly see myself as an Irish woman and the hub of my culture and the hub of my identity is in Dublin. And I so greatly enjoy being able to cross the border and go to the country that I see to be my own, to be where I'm from, the culture that I connect to. If I want to get my passport renewed, I have to go to Dublin and I don't want it to be in the future that I would have to cross some form of hard border to be able to access the country that I believe myself to be from. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, but then there are more pertinent issues that are far beyond the scope of just myself. So firstly, the Northern Irish economy and how that links with the South. Um, the Northern Ireland econ economy is so heavily based on agri-foods and goods and services crossing the border seven, eight, nine times during processing. Um, people in Northern Ireland are heavily dependent on the agri-food sector and entire communities, the farming community in Northern Ireland, which is so strong, will be decimated and devastated if any sort of hard border can come into the island of Ireland. Um, entire communities will be destroyed and disrupted and whole livelihoods will be lost, or at the very least, severely threatened. I am not from a farming background, but living in Northern Ireland, I know lots of people that are, because everybody's a farmer, and I know that it's a major, major concern for people that just don't know what the future of their own business or families are gonna look like. So that is one. Secondly, the very, very base level of everyday living for people on the island of Ireland. Um, there is a 310 mile land border in Ireland, but as we all know, we can cross it whenever we wish. But families live and operate across those borders. I have friends that went to school on one side of the border and lived on the other. People that work on one side of the border and live in the other. In fact, there are houses in Ireland that the garden backs on to the Republic of Ireland and the front of the house is in the north. So I don't know how they're gonna build a thousand little posts across this border, literally divide people's actual living spaces. And on a sad point, people, if they want to access their family or to see their own family, would have to cross some form of hard border, which I think is disgrace. So I am, again, speaking on behalf of all those people that are terrified about what the everyday living is gonna look like in Ireland should any form of border come into play in the wake of Brexit. Um, thirdly, and on a more poignant note, is the risk of any actual violence or danger in Ireland. Um, oftentimes, we all, I, I'm sure a lot of people are aware that Ireland was quite missing from the initial discussions around the first referendum in 2016, but since then, I think it's become more apparent with the voices from people of Northern Ireland speaking more loudly, not our elected representatives, because they're doing no speaking on our behalf at all, but in terms of people from Northern Ireland saying that the threat of violence is so real and so tangible in Northern Ireland and it's completely forgotten an awful lot of the time in the conversation. Um, during the Troubles, during the 30 year conflict that claimed 3,000 lives, some of whom are members of my own family, um, the border was a sticking point and a place of major conflict and major attack and I don't want to return to a day where I would be afraid to cross the border or that families would be afraid to cross the border because it's gonna be a place that will be targeted by dissidents or terrorists. 
That is something that has been completely forgotten in the wake of all the economic crisis and migrants and borders and all of the drama that surrounds Brexit. I, <laughs> the real life... <laughs> The real life impact on what Brexit will do to those border communities, the people who live and work and love across those borders, I think has been absolutely criminally ignored. And I think the only way that people in Northern Ireland who voted to remain by 56% are entitled to have the say they deserve is through a people's vote. We are being dragged by our heels into a Brexit that nobody in Northern Ireland asked for, certainly not the form of Brexit that is shaping up to be. And I think it is absolutely crucial that there is some sort of people's vote to allow people in Northern Ireland to have the say they actually deserve. <laughs> so, as I said, I have an awful lot of feelings about this. And it probably wasn't the most coherent or cohesive speech, but it's something I feel so strongly about because I don't know what the future of my life is going to look like on the island that I live in. So thank you very much for listening to me, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. <laughs>